click the bell icon to get latest videos from Ikeda. Hello friends, welcome to Machine Design. Guys, so far we have seen the forging procedures and what are the design aspects that we need to consider for them. In today's session, we are going to look at the design considerations that we have to make for the forging. That means when we have to perform a forging operation, what all possible design considerations we have to make. So let us start with the first one. You can see in this slide, the first one is fiber lines. What are the fiber lines? We know that when forging is done, the uh, material or the molten material solidifies. All the materials are oriented in such a manner that or, or the all the particles of materials are oriented in such a manner that they create fine fiber lines. Now, these fine fiber lines are very important because this is how the materials or the different molecules of the materials are connected with each other. That means the strength of the material or the strength of the molecules depend upon the fiber lines. Are you getting this? Yes. So, fiber lines are crucial, but we must consider that the fiber lines are parallel with the tensile stresses or the normal stresses, may it be compression, may it be tensile stresses, but they should be parallel with the um, fiber lines. So, you need to do it in two manner. Either you make the fiber lines form in such a manner that they will be aligned with the application of the tensile stresses and the compressive stresses. Or you apply the forces and loads in such a manner that the tensile stresses and uh, compressive stresses will be applied along the fiber lines. The second important thing is this fiber lines should be perpendicular with the shear stresses. As we know that shear stresses always act perpendicular or they always act at certain angle with your normal stresses. We make sure that or we have to make sure that the fiber lines are oriented in such a manner that if the uh, shear stresses are going to act on them, they act perpendicular. So that was the first consideration I have to make for the forging as far as machine design is concerned. You can see the second consideration that is avoid the machine or machining deep in the forged material. What does it mean? We right now discuss that the uh, after the forging, the thin fibers are created of the materials. Now, when we machine them, see machining is basically done to create extra holes, to uh, impart the uh, surface finish, and etc. etc. If you deep penetrate or if you penetrate deep inside the forged material, there is obvious chances that fibers will be damaged. These fibers will be damaged. As the fibers are damaged, like we have discussed, the strength of the material or the strength of the molecules which are held together will be damaged. We can never compromise on the strength of the product. So in such a case is that avoid the deep penetration while machining the forged things or forged products because that will directly link or that will directly affect your fiber lines. The third consideration as you can see is the draft angle. See guys, draft angle is used to make the removal of the forged part easy. Like we have discussed in the last lecture, there are basically two types of draft angles. The outer draft angle and the inner draft angle. The outer draft angle is designated by alpha and the inner draft angle is designated by beta. Now there are two chances. When the material starts cooling from the outside, the inner core will be cooled afterwards right in such a case that your outer draft angle which is alpha should be as small as possible yes and when the material cools from inside to outer side your inner draft material should be smaller uh, larger sorry that is beta so your beta should be larger if enough and your alpha should be smaller in in the respective cases the next consideration now guys before I move to the next consideration, let me tell you that these considerations we are doing especially for the dyes and the forging material. Means these considerations we have to take care of while we create or we, while we design the uh, dyes or while we design the 
forging procedure. The next consideration you can see is of parting line. We know that during molding, we have two different segments or cavities or dies. We pour the material and then we combine them or we club them together. Now, while clubbing them together, their interference or their, um, you know, their section which comes into picture, which comes into contact with each other is highlighted by parting lines. Now, these parting lines should be taken care of. Uh, two equal parts will be created. Like you can see in the uh, slide, two equal parts, if I create, the parting line will match very easily or very properly. The next thing you can see is it should be far from the inner plane. What should be far from the inner plane is your parting line. See guys, your material is going to cool down slowly. In such a case, that case if your parting line is quite closer to the inner core or inner plane, it will hamper. It will be uneven. But if it is as far as the uh, as far as from the uh, inner plane, it will have an adverse. It will not have an adverse effect on the parting line because the cooling rate at the inner plane and cooling rate at the outer plane outer plane will be different. The next consideration you can see is the mirror image. Guys, when we prepare the parts in forging, make sure that. Uh, both of them will be e mirror image of each other or uh, about the parting line the parts created or the segments created will be mirror image of each other that will help the parting line to be created very easily the next consideration as you see is adequate fillets and adequate uh, radii guys if you give a smaller fillet or smaller radii of the fillet at the corners there is a possibility that endurance strength will not be imparted properly. But if you give sufficient amount of radius and fillets or the radius of fillets to the uh, forged materials or the forging that we are going to take out, there are chances that they will be evenly cooled down so that the stresses that they are going to bear are going to be properly distributed over the area. This will also increase the endurance strength of the cavities or endurance strength of the edges. Whereas if I keep the radii of the fillets of very large amount, it will take more time to cool down and there will be unnecessary wastage of material also. So this is an important thing. We have to provide only adequate, only adequate radii for the fillets. The next consideration, which is the last of this kind, is thin sections and ribs. Again, it is related with cooling. How? If your sections are thin, are you agree that the heat dissipation will be very rapid? Yes. So, the cooling will take place very rapidly. Guys, we have to take care that cooling will have, uh, you know, a uniform speed or it will have a uniform intensity all over the forged body. Because if you do the cooling very rapidly, it will not only create the stress concentration areas in the part, but also it will create damage to your dyes. To avoid the damage to the dyes, we must take care that the uh, ribs or the walls will not be thin. They will be in the given proper range. This will allow the cooling to happen very normally and that will not hamper the dyes. Guys, these were the forging considerations in machine design. In upcoming lecture, we will be looking at different aspects and different ways of designing. Thank you so much for watching the video. If you like this video, please subscribe to Ikeda. Thank you. See you.